welcome to Rock Book Show. I'm Kimberly Austin, and joining me today is an amazing author, one of my all-time favorites, Rob Sheffield. Hey, Kimberly, how you doing? I am doing so good. Your book is incredible. I loved Love is a Mixtape. This might be my new favorite. I love this one. Well, it's my favorite. It's, it's the one that I get to talk about all the things I really care about, which, you know, music and girls. It's, it's what I always write about, music and girls. Yeah. You know, it's, that's, that's what engages me most. Well, this is the new book that we're talking about, Turn Around Bright Eyes, uh, The Rituals of Love and Karaoke. You know, as I read the book, I realized that this microphone on the cover is uh, important in a way. Sure, the microphone is what tells you that you know, you're know you doing karaoke. Uh, are you a karaoke fiend? I have never done it. What? I know. <laughs> oh my god, you're missing so much. It's the best. Yeah, this is, this is what I found out reading your book. So why did you choose karaoke as your love catalyst, if you will? Well, it, you know, it's just a human need to share music. It's, you know, it's part of all our relationships. And for me, like, talking about music filters into all the relationships in my life. So in this book, I, I wanted to write about being a son and being a husband and being a friend and being a brother and the way all those are connected to music somehow. And, uh, and it's funny that for me, and, and it, karaoke is just a way to love and worship music. What was your first time like? Well, it was, it was scary at first, and then, you know, as soon as I did it, uh, I, I stepped up, I did an ELO song, It's a Live and Thing, and uh, it blew me away even to do it, because I have to be honest, I have a terrible voice. It's terrible, terrible, terrible. It's a, a voice that, that can clear any room, and... And you have cleared a Chinatown place, right? I've, I've cleared a few. I've, there are a few rooms I feel like I have to wait a decent interval before I can go back to. But to, to be able to sing it with the microphones that are very forgiving, they're full of echo and reverb, they're designed to mask flaws. And I, I have plenty of flaws for them to mask. So to be able to sing in front of a, a group and to just have that you know, surge of actually performing music, for me as someone who always loved music but never performed music, it was, a, it was a real catharsis. Yeah, and you mentioned in the book that finding um, a voice is important, and Neil Diamond is your voice. Unbelievable. Neil, you know, I love Neil Diamond. I've always loved his songs, but it was only when I began singing his songs at karaoke that, that I felt like I was truly understanding Neil Diamond. He teaches you fearlessness and courage, you know, because he always belts to every line, even if the song is kind of ridiculous, which Neil Diamond songs often are, he doesn't care, doesn't get in his way. So he can sing a song like Forever in Blue Jeans, which is one of the most ridiculous songs ever, and he commits to it so intensely, it does not sound ridiculous when he sings it. It sounds awesome. Yeah. And Neil is kind of there to coach us all to be more awesome. Do you ever do You Don't Bring Me Flowers? Because for me, that was one of the all-time greatest Grammy moments in a song that I would love to do karaoke. That song, it's almost too intense because you need a Barbara to do that song. <laughs> I'll come along. Nobody, see, Barbara, like, nobody ever does Barbara Streisand songs because they are just too hard. Neil Diamond, when you sing his songs, you feel like Neil is welcoming you into the song. Barbara Streisand, she's just, she's too, too daunting. Like, those songs are too, and her part in You Don't Bring Me Flowers is, is just so hard. But, uh. I, I love her and I love that song. So that, that's one of my dream duets. Well, speaking of hard songs, are there songs that are great songs but aren't good karaoke songs? Lots and lots. Part of it is songs, songs that make you cry. Because there are some songs that make you weepy. You do them at karaoke and it's, it's kind of, you know, there's no crying in karaoke. It kind <laughs> of like throws off the tone. Yeah. And so there are some songs like you know, a, a good example is Operator by Jim Croce. That song just kills me, just kills me, it's so sad. Uh, or All I Want Is You by U2. Those songs, uh, I get too verklempt. Those are both songs that I've started and then I had to like press the skip button yeah. because they were, they were making me too verklempt and I just thought, you know, <laughs> I cannot, I cannot cry and sing at the same time. That's in the cradle would get me for sure. Oh my goodness, I wouldn't <laughs> even go there. I wouldn't. E Taxi by Harry oh. Chapin would be the same. Yeah, yes, um, but there, there are some songs that you love. But it's funny that y you hear the song in a different way when you're actually singing it with a terrible voice in front of a, you know, a bunch of strangers at two in the morning. Yeah, but you get to be somebody else, which is so cool. That's part of the excitement of it, and it's funny that for. Uh, my, my friends who are musicians trying to explain the experience to people who are non-musicians, you know, it's one of those things that, you know, 
I, I never thought that there would ever be invented any kind of technology that would allow me to actually wear the musician hat. And uh, it would be stretching to say musician since, you know, I'm, I'm butchering any of these songs that I'm singing, but that's part of the thing of karaoke. It creates this sort of audience in the room where everybody's all forgiving and all tolerating. And you took karaoke to a different level when you went to the rock and roll fantasy camp. Love that. That was one of the best weeks of my life. <laughs> I, will, I will love that week for the rest of my life. Those guys were so great. And these are, these are coaches who've committed their lives to music and fans who have given up a week of their lives to just be full immersion, uh, worshiping the music, playing the music with the rock stars. And it's, it's no exaggeration to say I was the least talented person there. Uh, I wasn't even the best tambourine player in my own <laughs> band, but it was still such a beautiful thing to be part of that. And each of the chapters has a song title as well. And I have to tell you, one of my all-time favorite chapters is now one of my all-time favorite chapters ever written. It's the Rod Stewart chapter. Oh, my goodness. It, Rod Stewart, he, for me, he's kind of this Zen sage who tells you where you've been and where you're going. And he sort of sums up where you are spiritually right now. Oh, my gosh. Like Rod Stewart. And you have also given me my new favorite phrase, which is, upstairs o'clock. <laughs> upstairs before the night's too old like can you imagine you know rod keeping a straight face in the studio when he's saying that of course he didn't but like but it, it's a beautiful thing that that rod rod is someone who specializes in songs that you know you know that he's not taking it too seriously but he loves it when he's singing it and that's kind of that's part of the karaoke ethos part of the karaoke attitude yeah, and as you talk about him now, the Rod we know now, and the bemused look that he has permanently on his, plastered on his face, when he was doing his recent book tour, it was just kind of surreal to watch. Beautiful thing. <laughs> it's funny because I wrote that chapter before his book came out, and so I hadn't read it yet. And reading his book, I, I thought, wow, this is, this is kind of the experience I was yearning for when I was <laughs> writing this chapter. And, and, and he's just put out an album of new songs for the first time in years. And, I love it, although I have to admit, like, I play it around my friends. They're like, uh, can we listen to something else now? And you know, the other thing I loved when you brought up that video that's all over YouTube with him on the Share special. And what's also great about that moment is it then goes into Two Doors Down by Dolly Parton, which would be an awesome karaoke song. Yes. That just the idea of going back to the 70s where Rod is, you know, in his little bachelor pad, dressing up, <laughs> sing, singing hot legs while dressing up for his little hot date with Dolly Parton. That, to me, that's, that's why the 70s were a sacred time in human history. <laughs> that's why the 70s were the peak. I'm telling you, it's, the, it's so true. But you had had a rough experience with karaoke. I didn't know there was like a gamesmanship to it, but the old folks in Florida taught you a lesson. You know, it, it, it's the depth of their commitment that, that blew me away. I, I said, you know, I've, I haven't, these people have been loving music longer than I've been alive. I, I can't match, you know, the depth of their commitment their, their adoration for these songs. It's like the last time I was down there in, in Florida with uh, where my folks have a place and, uh, and their friends, the, the senior citizens like doing their karaoke and it's all people in their, in their 70s and 80s. And th this, someone did this Johnny Mathis song and, and uh, this couple who I'm friends with, they started elbowing each other. I remember this one, remember this one. This is like big makeout song and I was like, Johnny Mathis makeout song, because uh, but you know that's the beautiful thing about it. Uh, it 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 was eye opening and inspiring to sing karaoke with with people who've been like loving those songs for 50, 60 years. And so to this day, will you stand by your song choice? Absolutely. I did New York, New York. The last time I was there, I did some Dean Martin a few a few months ago. I did Everybody Loves Somebody Sometime, oh, and I did Maybelline, which is a hard one to sing. But uh, that was, I wanted to do something maybe a little more rocking. But it would, even in that crowd, it was even daring to go up to the, to the late 50s. Yeah, wow. Well, like for a rookie like me, what would be a good song for me to start with? Well, who's a singer who you love to sing along with when you listen to their music? Barbra Streisand. <laughs> well, go there. Go there. Uh, and if you're, if you're not hitting the right notes, it doesn't matter. What matters is, is, is if you're worshiping the song, worshiping Barbara, and and living in the moment. And oh, Gladys Knight. Well, yes. <laughs> Midnight Train to Georgia is one of, my, one of my favorites to do. I love to be a pip, though. Yeah. Like, and I feel like if, as long as there's a Gladys, like I'm happy to do the you know, superstar, but he didn't get far. That part of it is like, yes, I love that. <laughs> That's the good stuff. You're absolutely if, right. When I can master the actual dance steps that the pips do and that 
legendary Soul Train clip, like then I will I will feel like I've lived a complete life. Yeah, I think that is an awesome aspiration to have. Yeah, it's like the day I get a really good Soul Train dance down, I'll be so excited. Uh, 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 yes, that will be. <laughs> it's, it seems to be taking a while. <laughs> so what are the ultimate summer karaoke jams right now? White, uh, Get Lucky versus Blurred Lines? Uh, it's no competition, but Blurred Lines is just Got to Give It Up by Marvin Gaye, which is one of my favorite karaoke songs. Uh, probably because Marvin Gaye, like sexiest dude in the universe, writing this song that anybody can sing and feel for a few minutes like they're a fraction as sexy as Marvin Gaye. And so that to me is a perfect karaoke song. And Blurred Lines just, just sounds like, you know, it, it sounds like Adam Sandler trying to do Got to Give It Up at karaoke. Uh, whereas Get Lucky is a song, boy, is that song easy to sing. It is easy to sing. And, uh, and with the raise our cups to the stars, you know, like the, everybody, everybody can participate in it, even if they don't know the song, because everybody can lift a cup to the stars. Most people, some people are on the floor already or f tottering off their bar stools <laughs> or running for the exits if I'm the one singing it. But that, that's a beautiful karaoke song. Yeah, and that's why you also say that Bon Jovi and Journey are so popular. Yes, you sing those songs and you, you, you're kind of joining a nationwide community. It's funny to think that at any given moment, somewhere in the world, people are singing those two songs at karaoke. And, you know, when you're just singing along with them in the car, you're kind of joining with this international community of people all around the world, keeping this endless loop of those songs going. Yeah, so, true. so what are rock stars' favorite karaoke songs? And why do they love karaoke? It's, it's funny. I remember uh, Simon the Bond of Duran Duran telling me uh, about one of his his delightful 80s experiences, uh, of which he had more than anybody, <laughs> probably in the entire universe. Um, but he was telling me about singing karaoke for the first time in the 80s uh, in uh, Singapore and doing a, Like a Virgin. And t it kind of blew my mind because I'm, I'm like, you're Simon Le Bon, you're an actual rock star. Y you, you can, you know, he's been singing his own songs for over 30 years. He has like an entire set worth of, you know, of classics to sing. He can fill a crowd anywhere. And yet he still cherishes that memory of singing someone else's song in a tacky karaoke bar. It, it, it blows my mind that, that actual rock stars like love that karaoke thrill as much as, as uh, us, us regular people. Yeah, and I love how you said in the book as well, you have memories of a lot of these songs, but now you create new memories of them well and they become the future. Yeah, it's crazy how you might think you have enough memories with the song, but the song it, it wants your future. The song wants to continue in, in, in your life in ways that you can't necessarily predict. So if you could only sing one more song? Wow, if I could only sing one song, uh, it would be Red Light Special by TLC. Uh, just really uh, steamy, slow, and uh, most importantly, I would be able to sing it and, and presumably nobody would be able to run the other way screaming because um, I really can't handle that song. That's, that's a beautiful song that is too beautiful for a voice like mine to sing. And yet that song just like takes me to another place. And I think if I could only sing one more song, it would be that one. Not a bad choice at all. <sighs> I'm not even gonna start singing it. <laughs> I almost brought us two hairbrushes and thought we could do a little Britney thing, but you know. <laughs> Rob, thank you so much for being thank here. You so much. I love your necklace. Thank you. I, it's I, the best. I kind of wore it on purpose. I got I a... <laughs> the the book is fantastic. I I can't recommend it highly thank enough. So Loved it. Kimberly. It's got tear stains in it. <laughs> uh, all the songs in it have tear stains on them, so. <laughs> That makes sense. You're so poetic. Oh, yeah.